we are joined this morning by the Social Care Minister, Ellen Waitley. Uh, very good morning to you. Um, is it a compassionate situation where we're going to presumably force migrant boats to turn round in the Channel? Well, good morning and thank you for inviting me onto your show. I mean, the first thing I think is remembering the situation of the migrants who are on boats like this and how you know, desperate uh, they are. Um, they must be desperate because that's why they have chosen to take such a perilous route uh, to travel to the UK. Um, and we don't know, they put themselves at risk in doing this. They put their own lives in danger. They also end up paying people smugglers and money going into international organised crime. So neither of those things are good things. The government and the Home Secretary wants to deter people from using this route to come to the UK and is working with the French government to try and stop people getting into boats Do you know and trying how to get it's going to the to UK work, this, way? this idea that they're going to be turned back? Um, Andrew Bridgen uh, suggested that they will be put onto border force uh, ships and taken back. But, um, I mean, is that something that you can do? I mean, you could take them back into French waters or are border force going to make the boats themselves turn around? Do we have any sort of detail on it? Uh, I don't. I'm, I'm the care minister. I'm not a home office minister. What I know is that government looks at all the options for how we can deter people from getting into boats and using this route to get to the UK and is working with the French government on this. Reach, recently reached an agreement with the French government where we'll provide 54 million of funding so the French can invest in more patrols uh, along the beaches and more use of technology to stop people getting into boats. And that's okay. the approach that is being taken to work with the French to try and stop this, this uh, flow of, uh, of people coming across. Okay, and this is hand in hand, of course, yeah. with our huge uh, effort to support people coming here from Afghanistan and over 15,000 people already arrived from Afghanistan who we're, we're giving of Welcome funding. Today. Yes, I was going to say, well, you are the care minister and obviously it's been a huge week with the first new tax for a very long time introduced, the 1.25% tax or levy as, as the spin is, uh, that's going to pay, first of all, uh, for the health service and for social care. What I wanted to know as I've been watching this week, and it's good to talk to you, we talk about this as all the talk's been about social care, but the truth is certainly for the next three years, most of the funding is going to fill the gap and the shortfall for the NHS. As care minister, hand on heart, do you think this is going to provide enough money to fix the situation in care? Honestly, your, your remit is focused just on care. Can you tell me there's enough money coming in here? OK, so there's, there's a lot that you just set out in that question, but I didn't want to pick up it. And, and the starting point, as you say, is a huge week for me as care minister, a huge week for social care, a huge week for the government, that we have done this thing that people have talked about for decades, the crisis in social care, the need for social care reform. Governments have ducked it for decades. We have seized it and we voted through yesterday the health and social care levy, which will fund the big ambitious reforms that we're putting in place for social care. The absolute no headline of that, putting in place a cap so that people won't have to worry about having huge and unpredictable bills for their care costs, but actually also a much broader package of reform for social care, including extra support for the workforce. As you just said, so in the 36 billion that this levy that we voted for yesterday um, will raise, in the uh, uh, early years of that, yes, the lion's share is going to go to the NHS because actually, rightly, we have to tackle those backlogs that have uh, developed through the pandemic as people weren't able to come forward for treatment or, no, thoughtfully, uh, no, stayed away because they knew the NHS was so busy with COVID. But we can't have millions of people waiting for treatment like that. So, um, of course, minister, we use the money for that. Back. Plus, just we have 5.4 billion allocated for social care in that first tranche of money. And hand on heart, is that enough? Is that enough? So, let me say, so that is a package to fund and to kickstart our big, bold reform programme, including implementing that cap on care costs and raising uh, the level at which you can start to get help uh, so, so that you, well, so you get help earlier with your care costs. At the moment, you don't get help with your care costs until you have around £23,000 worth of assets. It's a radical making new, that happen earlier. It's a radical new change. You use mm -hmm. the phrase kickstart. Does kickstart mean it isn't the full deal, it isn't enough, or is it enough? Will it do the job that's needed? Is this all the funding care needs, or does it need more? Uh, well, so two things. I mean, firstly, that this will build up over 
time. So we've got the 5.4 billion within uh, this three year period. And, and you know, part of the reason uh, uh, and the thing here is that it will take us until October 2023 to start putting in place this cap on people's care costs. It's a really, really big reform. It's complicated to implement. Um, and so then, then people will start, uh, it's called metering towards that cap. So actually the costs of that come in a bit later in this parliament and then actually will mostly fall into the future. Now, the good thing is we've set in place this health and social care levy so that you know, for the long term, that can provide the money to pay uh, for the cost of that cap and actually extra funding uh, to fund those who are state funded for their social care as well. But it's a long term thing. It's not something that will happen overnight. However, also in this money is money for shorter term, nearer term support for social care, including an extra 500 million to support the social care workforce. Minister, I've got a couple of practical questions I want to ask you moving away from the political and, and one that's come through to me a lot. I've spoken to many people who are already spending substantial amounts of money on care right now. We've heard from the Prime Minister that this is a radical change and they're going to have a cap on their bills. I think you may have just subtly answered my question in the fact that you said the metering starts in October 2023. Does that mean that for someone paying for care now, who's already spent 50, 60, 70,000 pounds, they will not the amount they're spending now will not go into the cap. This is only a cap on new spending from October 2023. So if someone's already spent 50% of their assets, it won't matter. It's just from the date October 2023. Or can you give people who are spending fortunes now peace of mind that the money they have spent will go towards the cap? So this is why I was completely upfront. And actually, as you said, I said it myself a moment ago. I would love to turn this on today. I would love to have been already able to turn this on. Uh, the fact is, say, governments uh, for many years haven't managed to get social care reform over the line. We have Conservative MPs, in fact, not Labour MPs, they didn't vote for uh, this extra funding for NHS and social care yesterday, but Conservative MPs voted it through. Therefore, we are implementing this reform, but it's big, it's ambitious, and that means that we can't start it until October 2023. As I know, and it's heartbreaking, and I, I see emails and I speak to people all the time who are incurring these so, kind of care so costs. I would love to solve that problem. I can't, but what we can say is we are putting something in place which, for once and for all, will give people the peace of mind that they're looking for. So those spending money now, their money won't go towards the cap, just to be clear on that. My yeah, second that question, is, that is the, the manifesto pledge, and we know the, the pledge not to raise taxes has gone, but there was a manifesto pledge that people would not need to sell their houses. Now, I, I, I do finance, and I can't see how the many income-poor, asset-rich people in this country will not will be able to fund up to £86,000 without it coming from their housing wealth. Mm. Now, I know, I'd like to know, you're talking about the deferred payment scheme so that people can pay once they die. It'll still mean selling their house once they die, but they can pay. How will that work in practice? Will I be able to defer it? Will everyone be able to defer it? Will you be charging interest? Will I do that via the government or will I do it through a social insurer? How will I be able to defer the cost so I only pay it from my house once I die? Uh, yes, so I'll, I'll go into as much detail as I can. I mean, let me uh, just, I guess, uh, uh, give you a sense that we are working through the detail of this reform you know, with the sector. We're not going to sit and do it all uh, within government and with Whitehall. So actually, you know, some of this has still got to be worked through. But actually, to some extent, um, uh, we've already done a huge amount of work on this with the, with the sector. Um, so just starting from, from the top, we talked about the cap. Another thing which is really relevant to this is meaning is, is us increasing the safety net, making a more generous safety net. So at the moment, you don't get any help with your care costs until you only have £23,000 worth of savings or assets at all. But We're that, raising that, that to £100,000. No, I will, I will, I will come. come okay. It just means that more people will get help. Uh, we're also raising the point at which you get all of your care costs paid for. At the moment, it's around £14,000. We're raising it to uh, £20,000. So we're raising that. But yes, exactly to your point. In addition, people do need to draw on some of the value of their home uh, to fund their, their care. They will. Everybody in that situation will be able to access deferred payment agreements. So they will not have to sell their home during with their the lifetime. State, Everyone or, will be able to access those. With or without interest and via the state or via private providers? How will it work? Uh, so this is something that's done through local authorities and the Treasury is involved in uh, uh, some of the, the financial mechanics behind the scenes. That's about the level of detail I can go into at the so moment. So we don't know.
Sorry? We don't know. What well, you're I gave telling you me an is we don't... I, I gave you an outline of, uh, of so broadly There are no practical works. answers to that question. I'm sorry, I do, I do practical journalism. Mm -hmm. I want to know the mechanism. The mechanism clearly doesn't exist yet. That, I presume, will be decided well, over no, the next it, year it, or two. It, it does exist, and, 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 uh, but what we're doing is extending an existing system to make it available to everybody. It's only available at the moment in limited circumstances, uh, but you can apply for these uh, agreements to your local authority. Helen Whaley, thank you very much indeed.